What does it take to to lift 100 kilograms into the air using only electric power? For me, the answer started with one goal: design and build a real cargo air vehicle alone. This is a story of how it began. This is not just a drone. This is a manned capable cargo air vehicle, purpose built to lift over 100 kilograms. I started this project with a few fundamental goals, prioritize safety, optimize range and power efficiency, and create something that could be modular and uh, repairable in the field. Before drawing a single line in CAD, I had to answer big questions. How much thrust do I need per motor? What's the best layout to ensure redundancy and balance? Which motor and prop combination provides the highest efficiency for, for this scale? I spent weeks defining the, the mission profile, hover endurance, takeoff weight, reserve margins. I ultimately settled on a multi-copter layout because of its stability and mechanical simplicity. But scaling it up introduces new challenges. Weight grows exponentially and small inefficiencies start to become dangerous. Um, lifting this much weight requires a serious battery system, one that can deliver over 200 amps continuously and stay safe under heat and vibration. To meet those demands, I use 3.7 volts, 30 amp hour high energy density lithium ion cells. Compared to cylindrical types, these pouch or prismatic cells offer better volumetric efficiency and thermal performance. The pack was configured as a 24S system, providing the high voltage needed for the aircraft's thrust requirements while minimizing current to reduce cable size and resistive loss. The cells were arranged with insulating layers and embedded cooling channels to ensure thermal safety during sustained high load operation. The structural layout uh, also factored in shock absorption and uh, service accessibility. For battery management, I designed a modular BMS composed of 212S slave boards based on the LTC6803G-4, controlled by a central master board. The LTC6803G-4 is well known for its high accuracy cell voltage monitoring and daisy chain SPI architecture. Each slave board monitored 12 cells and reported real-time voltage and temperature data through isolated SPI to the master. The master board was built around the GD32 F405 microcontroller, fully compatible with STM32 architecture. I used STM32 Cube IDE for firmware development, coding entirely in C, SPI, and CAN communication were handled through HAL libraries with DMA enabled the data transfer to avoid blocking delays. CAN messages were structured for external telemetry. And I implemented EEPROM based data logging and fault state recovery. The code also included safety checks for over voltage, under voltage, thermal excursions, and communication loss. All signals were protected through optocouplers and digital isolators to maintain safety across the high voltage system. Real-time debugging was performed using SWD and UART with diagnostic prints. This BMS system provides fast update rates, robust protection, and full visibility into back behavior, critical for safe flight in a system operating at this scale. The frame uh, is more than just a skeleton. It's a dynamic structure subjected to thrust, torque, vibration, and impact. Every joint, tube, and mount has to be optimized for strength to weight. 
I started by importing the CAD frame into a structural simulation environment. I defined material properties for aluminum 6061-T6, applied point and distributed loads at the motor mounts, and simulated scenarios like hard landings and sudden yaw commands. The results revealed torsional weaknesses near, near the center plate and uh, vertical flexing at the motor arms. I reinforced those areas with gussets and uh, wider tube uh, cross sections. Modal analysis helped identify resonant frequencies that could interfere with the IMU and GPS. So I tuned the stiffness of the arms to shift those frequencies out of the critical range. In addition, I performed a static structural analysis with a fully loaded mass of 130 kilograms applied as downward force to the center of the aircraft. The analysis showed maximum displacement of approximately 2.43 millimeters and maximum equivalent stress of 47.8 megapascals. Given that the yield strength of 6061-T6 aluminum is about 276 megapascals. This confirms a strong safety margin and structural viability under static loading conditions. I also checked thermal expansion since aluminum will flex slightly under heat. The entire design process was an iterative loop between CAD and simulation. More than 30 revisions were made before I was confident in the results. At this point, the digital phase was complete. The battery system had been verified, the structural frame was validated under simulated loads, and the layout of ESCs, power lines, and signal routing was mapped out. But now comes the part that separates dreamers from builders, real fabrication. The next phase means metal cutting, welding, and discovering if my designs hold up in the real world. In part two, you'll see how I bring this design to life. The welding setup, jigs for frame alignment, and how theory translates into sparks, aluminum, and torque wrenches. If this project sparked your interest or if you're building something of your own, consider subscribing and joining me on this engineering journey. We've just finished the design phase, but the real excitement is about to begin. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next episode.